Okay, it's the end of the session. I am here without Snicker or Doodle. They went inside. It is a hot day and I'm running a little bit late. The session went a little bit long. So uh, this is their roadmap to success. Now, um, basically they're, they're good dogs. They're sibling dogs though. And uh, uh, Doodle is a little bit more insecure than Snicker. And, but they're both insecure when separated from each other. So I really want you to kind of look for opportunities to try to practice training them to do different things separately. Um, Dogs, especially siblings, really need to develop some confidence by doing things without their, uh, without their sibling. And this is why uh, we don't let a sibling puppies take the same puppy class. We want them to develop on their own, independent of, uh, you know, sometimes we go through developmental stages. And just like us, we go to college, you know, we're in high school, we're one sort of kid. And we go to college and we kind of mature out and we become interested in different things. But you come back and you hang out with your high school friends, they kind of expect you in that same role. So uh, sibling dogs, we want them to kind of practice and develop that confidence independent of each other. Also a nice great way, uh, a nice way to develop confidence in dogs is to boost their self-esteem and confidence. And a great way to do that is teaching them new tricks and commands. And so one of the things I'd like you to do, I like the guardians to do is go to like YouTube and see if there, uh, look for some tricks. There are a lot of easy tricks and commands that you can do that don't take a lot of work, but uh, they're great ways to distract your dog. Also, the more that your dog learns, the more self-esteem and confidence it has with itself. So uh, there's simple ones, like where I have one where I take a treat and I lure the dog this way, but I have another treat in this hand. I put it behind my back like this and lure the dog around. And when it does a complete circuit around me, I put the treat in its mouth and I say, patrol. Patrol means to do a lap around the a human and get a treat. Um, some people will teach their dog to come and sit between their legs, bang your dad, roll over, uh, you know, give me a beer from the fridge, pick up your toys. There's a lot of different tricks you could teach your dog to do. Um, teach your dogs how to do those things separately. And um, I usually assign the same command word except for certain instances. Like if I want to teach the dogs to go out the door, I might have a different command word for each dog. So that way I can release them one at a time. But if you can teach the dogs uh, these new tricks or commands, I'd like you to try to pick one new trick or command each week for the next eight weeks. So week one, Guardian A teaches both dogs separately how to do it. Then all week long, if you want me to open the door, you have to uh, bang your dead. You want uh, me to pet you, bang your dead. You want some food, bang your dead. At the end of the, uh, the week, you say bang, and the dog's like, I'm dead. And so now you've, uh, you've really established that. And then the next week, the other guardian takes over and teaches both dogs a new command. And then all week long, you practice that one. By the end of eight weeks, that's the dogs now have eight different commands plus the three that they already have. That puts them above the threshold. We'd like dogs to have at least 10 tricks or commands that they know. There's a certain confidence that kind of builds in when dogs have achieved that. Some dogs need a little bit more. Some dogs can get away with it a little bit less, but it's a nice way to help them feel better about themselves. The clicker that I've given you is a great tool for training. Remember, the click is for the action. So I'm teaching my dog to roll over. I might do it in stages. So the first stage is just teaching my dog to lay down. And and I might click for that. Then I might teach, teach the dog to shrug its head this way. And I click for that. So you're gonna click for each individual step and eventually click for the, uh, the final step. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can do clicker training. Um, all right, we talked about exercise. The dogs here get walked, but um, uh, they, you know, I think we could do a little bit of extra exercise like we talked about the doggy Stairmaster. We talked about scent games. You can Google scent games. We talked also about feeding out of uh, treat dispensing toys like getting them a snuffle mat, each dog, and feeding them their food out of the snuffle mat. Also maybe getting an Omega, Paw, Treat Ball. And there are other treat dispensing toys and puzzles that you can get. And if the dog has to work for its food, that boosts its self-esteem and confidence. And again, the more confident a dog is, the less reactive they're gonna be to certain things. Okay, so um, let me see. So uh, we talked about uh, other forms of exercise, getting perhaps a doggy backpack, varying the route on walks and so the dog doesn't quite know where to go next. Um, and we could also, uh, uh, let me see, what else? Uh, well, I guess those are some of the key ones that we talked about. Um, remember though, uh, if you're interested and you want to stop them from pulling and lunging on the leash, let us know. We have a loose leash walking class that can really help with that. Um, for what they're doing, if they're lunging and pulling ahead of you, it's not a lot of fun for you on a walk. So uh, we'd love to help you with that if you're interested. Um, we also talked about the importance of rules and structure. For dogs, anything a dog is doing when you pet is what, you get, what you're rewarding. So if you pet a fearful dog, you're going to make it more fearful. A barky dog, more barky. Excited is probably the most common mistake people make. Now, if you do want to comfort your dog, you can lay your hand on them and they do say touch with affection, but as soon as you start petting them, you're going to amplify it. 
petting, you can pet your dog anywhere you want, but I prefer to pet here if all things are equal. That promotes a nose up and that's a confident dog body mechanic. And I prefer to not pet on top of the dog's head because that creates a nose down and that's an insecure body mechanic. And so uh, if all things are equal, try to pet here to let your dog know, I really like it when you sit or whatever the case may be. So um, uh, petting can reward good behaviors or bad behaviors. It's also important to understand that for dogs, good attention and bad attention from you is pretty much the same thing. Um, last thing, anything that your dog does in your presence that you don't specifically disagree with is looked at as you're having your seal of approval. So not saying no in the dog world is very much akin to saying yes because dogs go through life probing to see where the boundary or the limit is. They're expecting you to say, oh, that's too far, right there, that's too far, that's right. And after they do it enough times, they figure out that's where the boundary is. When we don't have any rules, we can't be consistent, we're not uh, uh, repeat, repeating things on a regular basis, we don't have good timing. So the three things they really learn from is no longer involved. And it confuses them, and that confusion leads to a lot of frustration on the dog's part and our part, and now we create anxiety and stress and other things that we don't need. So um, let me see. So we, uh, the more that the dog sees you acting like a leader by enforcing rules, the more it sees you burning the energy to do these things, and the more credit you get as being a leader. Uh, remember, there's in the dog world, there's no such thing as alpha dog. The guy that came up with that expression recanted it. It's an invalid response. There's no thing as alpha when it comes to wolves either. Dogs share leadership. Their leadership doesn't always transfer from one department to the next. They don't have an alpha. They have a lot of betas. So, but if a dog is a beta or a leader in any capacity, they want to do something to contribute to your group. And if we don't have any rules and we don't ask them, tell them what they can do to communicate or to contribute, they're going to do things that we don't necessarily want. And I think these dogs have now become protective of the yard. So the more the guardians can kind of assume the leadership mantle by enforcing rules, the more the dogs see them acting as leaders and the more they feel confident in them. So some of the rules we talked about not being allowed in the furniture, right now they're allowed in the furniture, kind of the not as nice of couches in the basement than the couches upstairs, but I would make it across the board. It's really a height matter for dogs. So you can get those X mats, letter X, M-A-T-S on Amazon or Chewy, they're about 11 bucks a piece. Put them on every cushion, and that way the dog doesn't feel comfortable laying there. If you want to sit there, you fold it up, put it underneath, and you sit down as, as much as you want. Um, all right, we also talked about um, not being allowed to be uh, uh, in the kitchen where we're preparing food, not to be able to within seven feet of a human who's eating. So when you have your grandkids over or guests, have them eat in different spots and then practice enforcing those visible boundaries that I showed you uh, down here on the uh, on the non-sun deck. And so uh, the last rule we talked about, and I've got a video on my website, several videos, you need to search for uh, invisible or kitchen, and it'll teach your dog, uh, show you how to teach your dog to stay out behind an invisible boundary. Speaking of which, I also forgot when you're leashing your dog up, make sure you're stopping and, pro and practicing your dog being leashed up in a completely calm and balanced state of mind. If you search for a calm leash on my website, there's a couple of videos that show you how to do that one as well. Just really stopping as soon as the dog wants to do it. And that's kind of an example of a pre-mac, which is this rule that I'm about to talk about now, sitting at the door. Go to the door, tell the dog to sit one time. If it doesn't sit within three seconds, walk away, sit down nearby, wait for th uh, one minute, and then go back to the door and command the dog to sit a second time. If it doesn't sit this time within three seconds, I walk away and sit down for two minutes. Next time I walk away and sit down for four minutes, eight minutes, but I'm only giving the dog one, oppor one opportunity to do it each time. And there's two dogs here. So if I say sit, and one dog goes out and the other one, uh, one sits and does one doesn't, I let the dog that sat out and I don't reward the other dog. That motivates the other dog. Now, um, uh, also while I'm thinking about it, every once in a while I'd like you to have about 10 treats, pull a treat out and wander around your house and then when dogs are not paying attention to you, say come or sit or down. Whoever comes and sits or downs first gets that treat, whoever comes and sits or downs second doesn't get anything. That creates a motivation, I better listen, I better listen, I better beat my brother in order to get that treat. When they are both getting the same performance, then rip the treat in half and give both of them a treat, but pay based on performance not being fair. Now, the dogs also, when they run outside, the part of their problem is they're in this crazy mode before walks or before going outside. So the calm leash exercise will teach your dogs how to be calm while they're leashed. Wait at door is another video that I've got on my website where it teaches the dog to wait at the door. And I think that'll be really important for you. Now, remember before these things, you can exercise your dog a little bit before you take it out. I know it's not super convenient, but going to the stairs and doing four or five up downs on the stairs is not super, uh, after a while, you, you just kind of becomes part of your ritual. It won't be that big of a deal. Uh, but that helps set them up for success. Um, so um, uh, uh, look for that. If you can't find the, any of those videos, like uh, wait at door, let me know. I'm happy to share, send you a link to it. But the first, we want to get the dog's condition to sit at the door and wait for permission to go out instead of scratching at the door. And then after that, we're going to teach them to wait at the door. And then when the dogs do go through the door, I would give them a different command word. So I'd say adventure and freedom. So the way I do that is uh, I would practice one at a time and say it's Snickers. When I open, probably have the door wide open and Snickers is sitting there. I show Snickers I have a treat and roll it outside the door. The dog runs out to get it. When it get, licks it up, I would say adventure, 
freedom, parole, whatever the word is you want to use. So now that dog has a command word to go out. The other dog, I would come up with a completely different command word and practice separately for them. So I was like, something bad is going on for some dogs over there. Um, so the idea is now we've created a command word for each dog. So it, we can have the door open and both dogs sitting there waiting and we say release or freedom or parole or whatever the word is and those dogs go out only when they hear their command word. That's really gonna help them go out the door calmly. And the other thing you might wanna do is if, they, if we do that, when you say freedom, they bolt out the door, then show them they have a treat and hold the treat. If this is the dog, bring, say freedom and hold the treat here and the dog comes to you and asks for a sit and then give the treat outside the door and uh, you say freedom. So you're kind of helping them achieve a little bit of calmness once they exit the door. Um, but that exercise ahead of time will really set that up for success. We also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is what it sounds like. It's petting your dog for a reason. And this should be applied if you want to pet your dog or if your dog wants you to pet it. So when the dog comes up and nudges you or paws at you or puts its nose in your crotch, unless, well, that one might come up with a command word. So um, when it comes up and nudges you, it's saying, hey, pet me. So you should, first of all, ask yourself, how long has it been since I've exercised the dog? If uh, it's been a while, it might want attention, but it might also want to play or have some exercise. If it's been a longer an hour, you might want to go to the doggy stairmaster or whatever it is. But let's say the dog just nudges you and you're not thinking about that or you, it's been exercised properly. You tell the dog to sit. Remember, leaders tell, followers ask. So the dog's telling you by nudging you, pet me, and then you pet it, you're saying, yes, you're my boss. So instead, next time it nudges you, give it a counter order, tell it to sit. If it's already sitting over here, tell it you want to sit it over here or over here or to lay down. Don't practice shake. That confuses dogs and for other reasons I won't get into here. But basically, you tell it to sit. If it sits or lays down within three seconds, you pet it under its chin and say sit or lay down and only sit or lay down. Don't say good dog or the dog's name or oh sit, just sit. Um, if it doesn't, remember playing hard to get works great for dating or works great for dog training. So if you tell the dog to sit and it doesn't sit, show it I have 11 other things that I could be doing and I'm living my best life and it doesn't bother me at all that you didn't sit. But now the dog's like, but I got the short end of the stick because I didn't get any attention. That will make the dog more motivated to want to listen to you the next time. Um, and so uh, after a while, the dogs will recognize I can't tell the humans what to do anymore. I have to ask and better than ask, I have to pay for the privilege of my attention, of their attention. And I'm gonna start sitting to prepay for that attention. When they do, you make sure you pet that dog for that because that's a much more desirable behavior. Um, now, remember to use the watchword of paycheck. If you suspect someone's petting without a purpose, it's not gotcha. Someone says paycheck to me and I'm petting a dog. I stop petting, even if I did it right. Tell the dog to sit. When it sits, I start petting on the chin and say sit. And I actually say, hey, ask the dog to sit. When you flush the toilet, the dog got up and I continued petting. But thanks, I do forget to pet without a purpose. So remember, that's if you want to pet the dog or the dog wants you to pet it. That'll increase its dog's respect for you. It'll boost its self-esteem. It'll help it practice listening to you. And it also makes your pets more valuable. It truly becomes a gift and it'll take you about two months to get in the habit of doing that, but please do so. And use that hand motion, that arc over their head. And as soon as they sit, lower it down. If you have a treat, let them lick it off. If you don't have a treat, or either way, just tickle them under the chin and say sit or whatever it is. Eventually this, ooh, I'll come running for that. All right, we also talked about passive training, which is the flip side of that. Passive training is waiting for the dog to organically offer you the behaviors that you want without you asking for it. So every time the dog comes to you inside, put it and say come. Every time it sits at your feet, put it and say sit, lays down, put it and say crash or chill, whatever the word is you want to use. You're letting them in from outside. When they come inside, put it and say castle or mansion or Hilton or whatever the word is means go in the house. Um, when they drink water, come up with the word that drink water, Heineken, happy hour, Merlot. Um, when it eats food, I would give a different command word to each dog. So I have three dogs. One of my dog's word is grub. One of them is lasagna. One of them is feast. So the way I taught that was every time the dog was taking a bite of food for three months, I said the word lasagna. When Max hears the word lasagna, there's food in his mouth. Lasagna means I eat. Lasagna does not mean the other two dogs eat. So that's how you create a command word for one dog and not the other. Um, something else you might want to try to teach them, I talked about at the beginning, teaching them to stay. I teach to stay for three days. First for duration, up to three minutes consistently before I did any distance whatsoever. Most people make a mistake they try to do it all at once. Stay is a wonderful control exercise because it requires them blotting everything else out. So that helps the dogs respect and listen to you a little bit better and practice uh, self-control. Uh, and the last D would be distractions. If you have need, uh, can't find any videos for that, message me, I have videos that teach other dogs how to stay. I'm happy to share those with you. We also talked about the escalating consequences and how to use those to keep the dogs out of, uh, uh, out of uh, behind invisible boundaries. Like I said, you can search for the word invisible or kitchen and I'll show you how to do that. If you have questions or get hung up on it, please let me know. Um, I went over the instructions on how to, uh, uh, what to do out here. Make sure you're practicing this, uh, both these exercises once a day at least with each dog. 
more practice, more practice will make it faster. But make sure your practice sessions themselves are one to two minutes, three minutes maximum. And make sure you always end on a good note and afterwards they get a play with you or go for a walk or do something that's enjoyable so they remember, yeah, we did a little bit of work and I got a lot of treats and then they gave me the best belly rub ever. And that motivates the dog to want to do it again. If you get frustrated and the dog knows you're frustrated, it's not going to want to do it the next time. So maybe it's got to be all positive when it comes to positive reinforcement and modern dog training. Um, let me see. Um, I'm sure there's going to be questions and things that you have uh, that we uh, talked about that you can't remember. Don't be afraid to text me. The number I gave, uh, uh, I called you from is my private cell. Text me. Don't wait. I get mad at my clients when they don't let me, let me know they have a question because I can't help you unless you reach out and let me know. Um, uh, and then if you want to get in that loose leash walking class or there's anything you want to have a trainer come by to work on anything else, let me know. I'm happy to hook you up. All right. I would normally say this is Snicker and this is Doodle, but you'll have to see them in the video or the picture. Uh, I'm David, and this is the Roadmap to Success. Remember, when it comes to dogs, everything you do trains them, only sometimes you mean it.